So yesterday in a talk, one of the speakers, yesterday in the talk, one of the speakers said, you should listen to the music in your head very carefully because your subconscious might be telling you something. Today, this becomes a literal truth. <laughs> I'm, I think we're all like this, mind blown. Awesome, thank you. And such an interesting combination of talks as well. I'm sure you all have questions. There is a microphone. Uh, there, is a, there are two microphones indeed going around and we're going to take some questions. I'm just going to ask one big level question. When devices are everywhere, uh, and we were had a wearability, wearable technology plat discussion yesterday, and that was we were touching on some of the same themes. But now I wonder, when technology is everywhere, will we go back full circle and just start behaving like people again? Oh. You see, will it become so invisible that the technology disappears and we go back to a sort of pre-technological society, or will it change us fundamentally? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Um, you know, some people think that doing the work, so I talk about automatic solutions, some people talk about doing the work as being a richness to who we are, and if we just have computers solve all these tedious tasks for us, then we won't be who we really are, we'll just be lazy and sit around. But uh, my hope is that if we do, as we continue to evolve and we do have technology that helps us take care of all the chores that we don't want to do every day, We'll have the time to really invest. I, I have an optimistic view on humanity that we'll spend our extra hours making each other's lives better. Um, but other people have different takes on that. <laughs> what, do you th what do you think, Tomonori? I think uh, then uh, we can notice that we cannot notice now. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, we uh, can get uh, another sense, kind of another sense. Yeah. That is my answer. Yeah, no, so, so it is a, a new place. And I think your vision for what that place will be like, or the, the serendipity aspect of it, is mm. incredibly useful. I, I realized, I should have said, uh, serendipity, if somebody doesn't know this word, basically means a sort of lucky coincidence, mm. uh, but it means something happening at the right time in a way that feels meaningful, right? Uh, when the, when the right information comes to you at the right time. Perhaps this talk, these combinations of talks, uh, was a serendipitous moment for some processes that you guys are thinking about right now. Let's have some questions or reflections, normal debating rules. If, if you want to say something that is not a question, you get like one sentence, no more. <laughs> okay. Questions? Reflections? Be brave. Uh, before a question, yes. I have a request. Uh, it, uh, I cannot uh, answer a uh, long and uh, difficult uh, question because of my English. So, uh, easy and simple question, please. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you. Simple English, good for everybody, I think, at this point. Who has a, a uncomplicated question? Or a very complicated question with small words? Uh, there's one right here in the front row. Uh, or, yeah, let's get a microphone over here. Uh, and while you're doing that, let's take Lenora over there. Yeah, so, wait a little, and over there, there you go, yeah. Okay, now that was too confusing. I did a twin <laughs> thing, see, to save time. Okay, let's start over here, Annika. Uh, I'm just wondering with uh, all the smart technology, are we getting smarter or are we getting dumber? Are we getting smarter or dumber? <laughs> we humans, I'm assuming, yeah. Hmm? Well, you know, ev <coughs> every day when I go home, I have this set of things to do that I like to call digital chores. They're like responding to all the emails, responding to different things, taking, looking at my mint, trying to figure out all the different things to do. And this takes up 20 minutes to an hour of every single day. And I'm not socializing, I'm not seeing other people. We walk around like this with our, with our phones in our hands. We're kind of oblivious sometimes because we have to do so much with those interfaces, with those, and with our phones, with our computers, and I think I hope that if we eliminate some of those chores, some of those digital chores, we as humans will get towards a better, a better social experience where we do more face-to-face -face kinds of communication. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're getting smarter or dumber because of these machines? Uh, we can be smart because uh, uh, computers uh, will help uh, our activity and uh, we can uh, focus on thinking something. Hmm? 
over there uh, in the back row. First, yes. Uh, well, actually, the can you hear me? Uh, I think that first question was a very simple version of my more complex one, which was similar around, yeah, thumbs up. <laughs> uh, emotional so? development. So I'm, in, I'm interested about the character uh, that was used to develop the ears, that she was very shy and that the ears might help her communicate. But I wonder if there's sort of a, becoming an over-reliance on that rather than personal development and working on our ability to communicate with each other more directly. Okay, let's translate that <laughs> so that to, see, to make sure that I understand <laughs> what you mean. Do, I, so what, what I hear is, would it, in, if a shy person uses cat ears, mm -hmm. for instance, to communicate, would it not be better for that person to, to develop themselves to be less shy? Ah. Oh. <laughs> okay, I understand. <laughs> Kana, Kana, uh, Kana, uh, last month Kana went to MIT, Media Labo, and she's all still shy, but she bring Neko Mimi. Then people ask her, oh, what's this? Then she, her, uh, her, she felt her mind is opening. Ah. Yes. It, it became an alibi to interact, indeed. Hmm? This is very interesting. We had a question here, uh, lady in red. Uh, pardon, we need a microphone over here. Yeah. It's yes? a simple question. Where can I order those ears? Yes, where can those you buy ears. it? Yes. Ah, good question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, now you can buy, uh, I think, uh, you can buy at uh, Amazon.com. But I don't know uh, uh, the situation about in Sweden, mm. but I think uh, you can buy online. Very good, thank you. Over here. Yes, I have a question. Um, will you make technology that can help us love more? Love more. Love more. Ah. Ah. I think so. Thank you. <laughs> In that case, I would, I would like to ask Samsung the same question. Golden, when will Samsung make a, make a technology that will help us love more? Well, when we It'd be awesome to have that pitch deck together. Maybe we can work on it. <laughs> yeah, work on that. Some more questions, please? Yeah. It's one over here. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Yes? Um, so I was just, so first one sentence. I think you should work together. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the question would be, um, and that's more to you, um, I think, um, what kind of possibilities do you see with that kind of technology uh, with the ears and the brain waves? So for the new yeah. no UI thinking, what kind of possibilities do you see? Yeah, definitely. So <clears throat> I broke down my talk into three principles, and the first was to embrace typical processes instead of screens. And the whole idea there is we just do the things that we want to be doing. And then technology is kind of built around it. So the car door, we just kind of do the thing we want to do is grab the door handle and the door is unlocked or lying on your bed, hospital bed, and does what you want to do. And I think brainwave technology allows that same thing, right? You can, if you can garner in, with enough confidence that somebody wants to do something in a particular situation, so you see a certain problem, you see somebody going through a set of actions and you want to improve that set of actions, and we have enough confidence that they're actually thinking about a particular thing, that could be a pretty awesome uh, response. I mean, you want to talk about magic moments. If you're just thinking about something and the technology responds to it, that's pretty impressive. I mean, I think we saw in that South by Southwest video, people just like not understanding what was going on, but just filled with delight. And that's the kind of thing that can happen. Yes, there's a question over there. Yeah, I'm not going to be that romantic. Um, if interfaces, uh, I guess that they are created by, uh, to put also publicity and all these things. So you're thinking that uh, you, you, you want uh, not to have so many interfaces. Do you think that there is going to be like some brands or corporations that they are not going to help on 
uh, developing this, this area? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I work for the largest screen producer in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it can be an uphill battle. I mean, I think right now, one of the really hard things to do is that we, are, we have a language established around how to sell and how to talk about smartphone apps. We have an app ecosystem, right? And it doesn't mean you can't create an app that has no interface. You can do that. Um, actually, the Moves app, if anyone's used that, has my favorite icon of any icon. It's a, it's a phone in someone's jean pocket, because that's how you input into it. You just walk around. Um, it later has an interface to see that data. But nonetheless, it's easy to sell that kind of stuff, because we can see a hero shot. We can see it in a magazine. But it's harder to sell experiences. right? You, we walk into a technology store, and you see a bulleted list underneath each product. And when you go to shop for a cell phone, somebody says, well, this has 10 megapixels, and this has 20. The processor speed is this fast. We don't sell experiences all that well. Uh, you don't often walk into an electronics store and somebody really understands the products in that way. So it's a really hard challenge to, be, to say to somebody, well, when you just do the thing you want to do, it just works. That's, that's a hard thing to sell, right? You kind of have to see it or live through it, and advertising is not really ready for that. At the same time, though, I mean, brand marketing the, the whole point of brand marketing has been to sell abstract ideas connected yeah. to brands. So taking a similar type of storytelling and, and translating experiences, I think, will not be incredibly difficult, necessarily, yeah. at least. I mean, it's a good point. I mean, something like Coke or Pepsi, right? Those are just experience sales, yeah. brand sales. Over here. Hi, I'm Annette. I'm at the University of Copenhagen. I, I was thinking a lot of technologies these days are made more and more individual. Uh, could this connect back to something emotional, make it more social again? Because even what we call social media is really about individuals showing off to each other. Yeah, I'm all, I'm all, I'm all about individuality. I think we make a mistake when we try to create averages. I, I don't know if you have further things to add. I could say a few things, but the individuality mm. of technology. Mm -hmm. The question is, uh, technology uh, will for individuals. For individuals? Yeah. How, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah. Will emotional oh, technology be social? Will emotional oh, technology be social? Oh, I see. I am yeah. sorry. I hope so. Because uh, uh, if we share our emotions with others, uh, we uh, could make a better uh, communication and relationship between uh, people and people. Uh, if we cannot uh, uh, speak the uh, same language, uh, now I'm feeling. <laughs> I, I wonder though, if we have a whole group of people wearing Nekomimi and they react to the same things, I think that will be very powerful to be part of that group. Do you see what I mean? Everybody's ears going up at the same time. Oh. For instance, that could be one way of being oh. social with these, these individual technologies. Yeah. We're running out of time, I have to say, so yeah. let's have some final comments. What would sure. you like to oh, say? Sorry, I was just going to add to that um, and say, you know, the good thing about those ears is that it shows what you're sharing, right? There's total transparency, you know exactly what's being conveyed to the world. And in a lot of these back-end worlds, in like something like Facebook, right, you don't really know what people are sharing. So you need a lot of transparency. I think it'd be awesome if someone wants to be able to share that individual information, but they need to know that they're doing it. So a product like this, you can see what's happening. Any, any last words? OK. Next one, uh, our new product, Neurocam, will be the best product of us. So please. Check our uh, homepage. I promise we all will. <laughs> Tomonori Kagaya and Golden Krishna. Thank you so much.